The film opens with a chilling news report on television, the victim's voice growing hysterical as she recounts a man attempting to bite her. Meanwhile, the family dog beside the TV set has its eyes wide with fear, just like its owner Adam. He has just stumbled upon the bodies of his parents, lying in a pool of blood. Snapping out of his trance, Adam quickly ducks under the bed, pulls out a gun, and gets ready for what's next. As he's fumbling with the weapon, the creature responsible for the gruesome scene enters the room, its eyes glowing with a sinister hunger. It starts to drag his father's body away, but Adam is determined to survive. With a fierce determination, he readies himself for battle, and as the creature, revealed to be a vampire, lunges towards him. The sound of animalistic mauling echoes through the house. The scene changes as Charlie Brewster's world is turned upside down when a mysterious new neighbor, Jerry Dandreich, moves in next door. As Charlie starts to settle into his new normal, he begins to hear unsettling rumors that his classmates, including his dear friend Adam, have gone missing. Despite initial doubts, Charlie's former friend, Evil Ed Lee, blackmails him into checking on Adam at his house. Charlie is torn as he's recently become one of the cool kids and doesn't want to be associated with the outcasts, Id and Adam. But as he's being dropped home by his girlfriend Amy, he sees his mother flirting with the alluring Jerry. Charlie and Amy decide to go say hi to the new neighbor, but as soon as Jerry retreats inside, Charlie receives a threatening message from Id. Id threatens to reveal embarrassing childhood secrets about Charlie if he doesn't show up to help check on Adam. With no other choice, Charlie rushes to Adam's house, where Id is waiting. As they try to enter the dark and empty house, Id claims that the new neighbor Jerry is a vampire. Ed Ed and Adam had been conducting an investigation on this for a while, and they are certain of Jerry's identity. One of the pieces of evidence being the fact that Jerry's windows are completely blacked out. He warns Charlie to never invite Jerry into his house, because a vampire requires an invitation to come in. Of course, Charlie finds this ridiculous, and the two start arguing about how much Charlie has changed since he started hanging out with the cool kids, who Ed thinks are nothing but fake skanks. On that note, the two part ways. Ed is on his his way home when he hears footsteps behind him. It's his school bully Mark, who catches up to him and overpowers him. As Ed manages to break free and run, he sees his neighbor Jerry, who subdues him using his mental manipulation powers, overpowering Ed and trapping him. The scene cuts, but not before we see Jerry sinking his dreaded fangs into Ed's neck. Next day, Charlie finds Ed missing and goes to his house, only to find his parents there. They welcome him in, and he asks for permission to go upstairs under the guise of borrowing some books. Inside Ed's room, he is met with a shocking discovery. On Ed's computer, he finds a website for a vampire hunter named Peter Vincent, but that isn't all. Charlie also finds videos that Ed had taken in front of Jerry's house. As Charlie watches in horror, he can see Jerry's car door moving on its own. Jerry isn't visible on camera. This is the proof Charlie needs. He can't deny it any longer. Ed was right. Jerry is a vampire. When he goes home, Jerry suddenly turns up, claiming that he needs a favor. He has a girl over, but he's run out of beers, so he asks if Charlie owns a six-pack, which Charlie nervously says yes to. Jerry follows him right through his door, but as expected, he doesn't step in. Charlie digs for the six-pack in his fridge as Jerry watches. He accidentally breaks a bottle, and Jerry offers to help him clean it up, but the scared Charlie insists he can do it himself. As Charlie hands Jerry the beer and closes the door, he can't shake off the feeling of unease. His mind is consumed with thoughts about his mysterious neighbor. He rushes upstairs to find Annie waiting for him, but as he reaches the window, he sees Jerry's date for the night arrive, none other than their other neighbor Doris. In his haste, Charlie roughly pushes Amy onto the bed as Jerry looks up at them. Confused and hurt, Amy decides to leave. Later that night, Charlie jolts awake by the sound of a woman's screams. He quickly calls 911, but when the police arrive, Jerry smooth talks his way out of the situation, claiming that the screams were simply of a woman's pleasure. Charlie watches in disgust as Jerry gets into his car and drives away, just as the police are leaving. Later, Charlie sneaks into Jerry's house to investigate his suspicions, as he feels something off about him. He is determined to uncover the truth, but also mindful of the danger he might be putting himself into. As he moves through the silent rooms, he feels like he's being watched, but he keeps going as he's getting 
closer to uncovering Jerry's secrets, he finds an occult insignia in the study and takes a picture. But before he could find out more, Jerry returns, forcing Charlie to hide inside the closet. Surprisingly, he finds a secret door leading to a hall with several chambers one of which is locked. He looks through the peephole and finds Doris, so he takes out a screwdriver in an attempt to unlock the door. Unfortunately, he is forced to hide yet again as he hears the sound of Jerry approaching. Through the door gap, he watches as Jerry drags poor Doris out and sucks her blood. As this happens, Doris signals him to stay quiet. In the next few minutes, Charlie frees Doris from the chamber and helps her escape the house while Jerry's distracted by TV. But as they're leaving, they see Jerry coming towards them, afraid that they They've been caught. Thankfully, he was just grabbing an apple. However, just as they think they've made it out, they see Jerry watching them with a sly smile. They escape, but when Doris steps out into the sunlight, she bursts into flames, shocking Charlie. When he returns to the house, he warns his mom, Jane, to stay away from Jerry and to not ever invite him to their house, which confuses her. Soon, Charlie goes to Vegas magician Peter Vincent, a supposed expert on vampires. Unfortunately, Vincent doesn't take him seriously and kicks him out, leaving an angry Charlie to deal with Jerry on his own. With no other choice, Charlie goes home and puts up garlic and crosses around his room. Meanwhile, the school bullies, Mark and Ben watch from outside his window in wonder. Jerry then walks up to them and within less than a minute attacks the two. Back inside the house, Charlie is carving out stakes to arm himself until his girlfriend shows up and asks him why he's been acting so weird. But before he gets to explain, Jerry comes knocking on their door to ask Jane to hand over her son because Charlie broke into his house the other day. Charlie is determined to stop Jerry and protect his loved ones, so he convinces his mother not to let Jerry into their home. But Jerry is not so easily deterred. He realizes that if there's no house, he doesn't need an invitation to claim his victims. So he sets the natural gas in the house on fire, blowing it up. Charlie, his mother, and his girlfriend, Amy Peterson, barely escape with their lives, fleeing through the desert in their minivan. But Jerry is not done yet. He chases them with his truck, forcing them to crash. When their disabled car is then hit by another vehicle, the angry driver steps out. It is then that Jerry reveals his true vampire form, lifting the car effortlessly and attacking the driver, draining his blood. Charlie bravely steps in, armed with a big cross, telling his mom and girlfriend to run. He approaches Jerry, who has now returned to his human form. But surprisingly, the cross burns when it comes into contact with the vampire, and he easily throws Charlie into their car. Charlie's courage to protect his loved ones has led him to face the vampire head on, but he is outmatched by the vampire's strength and power. While he teases Charlie about stupid humans and their penchant for missing the heart when staking vampires, Jane sneaks up behind them and impales Jerry with a road sign, making him squeal in pain. She then faints from a head injury sustained in the crash. Charlie and Amy carry her up and the three climb inside the dead man's car. Charlie purposely slams into his family car, causing it to topple on top of Jerry. When the family flees the scene, we can see Jerry's bones realigning. Charlie's mother is then admitted to a hospital. The police also arrive to ask them what happened. But of course, Charlie doesn't reveal anything because he knows they won't believe him. At the hospital, Charlie gets a call from Peter telling him to come over. Peter gives Charlie advice on how to defeat Jerry, but midway through the conversation, Ed, now a vampire, shows up, posing as a package delivery boy. Vincent fetches a crucifixion nail to threaten him, but then cowardly scrambles in fear as Ed chases after him, and the sliding door severs Ed's arm off just as he's about to catch Vincent. While this is going on, Charlie and Amy stumble upon Vincent's girlfriend's dead body at the entrance and discover that the elevator switch has been smashed, meaning they have to find another exit route. This leaves them with no option but to hide behind a shelf as Ed starts looking for them. After the two knock the shelf on top of Ed, Charlie takes the nearest blade and tells his girlfriend to go to safety. Ed proceeds to choke and throws him across the room, but Charlie rises again and takes the axe displayed on the wall. The two face off and Charlie wildly swings his axe at Ed until it finally lands in his throat. Just as Charlie and Amy think they've won, Jerry appears. In a fight for survival, Amy manages to fend him off, but their victory is short-lived. Charlie is forced to make the sacrifice and kills Ed, who reassures him before dying that it's okay. With Jerry hot on their heels, Charlie and Amy flee into a crowded club. In the chaos, they become separated, and Amy is bitten and taken by Jerry as a desperate Charlie watches on. The next 
next day, Charlie is determined to take down Jerry, and he turns to Peter for help. But Peter is hesitant, revealing that his own parents were killed by a vampire, later revealed to be Jerry himself. However, he does give Charlie a special stake that can kill Jerry and turn all of his victims back into humans. Charlie sets off to confront Jerry at his house, with Peter reluctantly joining him. As they enter the house, they break all of the windows to let sunlight in. They are led into Jerry's basement, where they are ambushed by many of Jerry's victims, now turned into vampires, including Amy. Charlie, having outfitted himself in a flame retardant suit, lights himself on fire in order to burn Jerry while he tries to stake him. Peter shoots a hole in the floor above to allow sunlight in, which burns Jerry. With the vampire weakened, Peter throws Charlie the stake, and he plunges it through Jerry's heart, turning him into dust drifting away. As Jerry's hold over the young vampires is broken, they suddenly transform back into humans, with no memory of how they got in the basement. In a moment of triumph, Charlie watches as his friends and several other people are brought back to life right before his eyes. It is a moment of pure elation as he watches the people he cares about most return to their normal lives. And just as Jane recovers, the movie comes to an end on a high note, leaving Charlie victorious and the town safe once again.